Yeah, you are. And I'm missing the red line. Is that here? Yeah, last time. How are you? How's good, your game? Good to see you. Still good? Oh, yeah. No. I haven't played yet. No, no, I'm just. Oh, that's, that's a good question. I'm hard for you. I stopped by at 3 o'clock. I'm going to stand there and wait for this one. The workers? The workers. I just had like five guys by now. Yeah, we were allowed to walk. We were walking together. So I was like, I'm going to go to the next one. Wow, I know. Well, I guess you should. Let me help you. I was like, I'm going to go to the next one. I was like, I'm going to go Hello, welcome to the uh, Dutchess County Fair, uh, the business breakfast in August. This is uh, probably our most well-attended breakfast. Um, I, I get a kick of walking around in the fair before everything's open. Just It's kind of like the calm before the storm. Um, you get to see a lot of the, uh, the workers that wake up, start really um, cranking everything out. This way when, when the masses come, um, everything runs smoothly. Um, I'm Jesse Hewitt. I'm the president of the uh, Rhinebeck Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and welcome to the breakfast. And we'll get started with a few announcements. Uh, good morning. Thank you for everyone coming. And I'll tell you something. Um, how about this weather? It's perfect. Perfect. Uh, I, I, as I told the listenership in KAIP radio, that I said, I think the Chamber of Commerce will take credit for this great weather this week. So, um, uh, but anyways, welcome once again to everybody. This is the 171st year of the Dutchess County Fair. And um, what... And what a great fair it is. I was uh, saying earlier that last year I went to the New York State Fair and there was a huge line of people in one of the pavilions. It was like an hour long. And so naturally I had to get in the line. I don't know what it was for, but I thought, well, it's gotta be something food related. And so I'm in line and I asked the lady in front of me, I said, so what are we waiting in line for? What is this huge line for? She goes, oh, for baked potatoes. And um, I thought, wow, that's really, <laughs> really exciting, baked potatoes. And I said, well, at our fair, we stand in line for chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry milkshakes. So uh, I, th I think I prefer our fair over the New York State Fair. But anyways, again, thank you for coming. And um, there's just a few things we wanted to uh, talk about. And um, the one thing is... I wanted to highlight our elected officials. I believe I saw Heath. If you can stand up, our... Thank you. And uh, Lenny Miller, the uh, unofficial elected official of the community. <laughs> So, and, and with that, so I think, is there any other elected officials? Anybody else who feels like an elected official? All right. So, um, just a few announcements. Uh, we have had a great year this year, and I'm wondering if anybody who's joined this year in the chamber, if you could stand up. Anybody who's a 2016 member. Great. The Beekman Arms finally joined. Woo! But by, by the way, this year, the Beekman Arms celebrates its 250th anniversary. So congratulations on that. Um, we have a couple events coming up. Uh, our breakfast on September 21st. Our uh, September 15th after hours breakfast at Wilderstein, sponsored by Vicki Hack. And uh, most important thing we've got coming up is our cocktails at sunset. That's October 21st. It's going to be at the Rhinecliff Hotel. We've got the whole Rhinecliff Hotel to call our own. So we've got the ballroom on the top floor, the first floor, and then downstairs 
which I guess could be the first floor too. But, um, but we have both floors with the wraparound porch, with the covered tent. It's gonna be a great night. And this year, as we've done in the past, is really try and pump up community support for the lights. Uh, we spend, we buy about 250 strands of lights. Each strand has 100 light bulbs, so that's 25,000 new lights that we fix to the trees on top of the old lights. Um, so we really want to get the community involved because we know you as the business community have through the ticket purchase, uh, through attending cocktails, through donations, through silent auctions, that's how we build the equity up to fund the lights. So we really need to kind of kick it up a notch and we're really trying to appeal to the local community, i.e. the weekenders. <laughs> and, and get them involved because they're here for a reason. Um, and they're here because of that, of that beautiful quality, that historic village that we have, that we call home, that we can live here seven days a week. There's people that choose to live here on the weekends, and thankfully we have them. But boy, I'll tell you, when that first snow falls in, in the village and the lights are on, it's like a beautiful painting. It's this incandescent glow that just, it's just beautiful. And I think we need to really appeal to the public to help kind of join in the effort of lighting our village up. So we've got a lot of good things planned for that. Um, what else? Oh, and we have quite a few of our volunteers. We have this lovely visitor cottage uh, that they are the true ambassadors of Rhinebeck because when people come through and they don't know what to do or where to go, uh, we have our visitor cottage, and I have some uh, Rhinebeck volunteers, if you can stand as well. Where are they? I've got Leslie, Ward, Barbara, <laughs> Betty Lou, Vanderlyn, uh, who else? Barbara Gray Black, yep. So thank you for that. Um, and I wanna say thank you because this, we didn't do a 50-50 this morning. We just are basically collecting for our scholarship fund. Uh, we hand out a $1,000 scholarship every year, and I figured, you know what, this year in lieu, because of the generosity of the Dutchess County Agricultural Society, they have paid for our breakfast. It's lovely and it's wonderful. Um, but thank you for those who contributed to the fund this morning, so we can get a jump start on that. And Jesse, he's, I think he's leaving this all up to me, but um, <laughs> thank you, yes, thank you. So with that, that's all my little menial tasks I have to accomplish. Um, and I just wanted to, again, introduce Jesse as our president of the chamber. I've got other bo and, uh, board members, if you can stand, of the Rhinebeck Chamber. And uh, I've got, we've, we're lucky enough to have Tom Sipos and Jim Langan of WKIP Broadcasting Live. They were here last year and they're here again this year. Um, and there's, like I said, it's a great opportunity. They're good supporters of the fair. They'll be here tomorrow broadcasting live as well. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce one of the patriarchs of Rhinebeck, Mr. Lou Rugi, who is also the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets by Rhinebeck without passing it by this guy. Uh, is his face red? Is his face red? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to hand it over to you, and I just want to say thank you again um, for everything the Dutchess County Agricultural Society does with their scholarships they hand out with the opportunities they give to not-for-profits and community groups to advertise, to promote their events here. And there's so much. You guys are like an, like, a, a, like an iceberg, meaning, you know, we see on one level what we see on this level. There's so much going on underneath, so much giving back, contributing back to the community that is really under the radar. And, uh, and I just appreciate the people that are at the helm of the Agricultural Society because it's like they are, um, so in tune about keeping the agricultural message clear and present during this fair. If it wasn't for Agricultural Hill, this would just be a carnival. And that's what sets our fair apart than so many. I was talking with a couple that come up from Maryland every year to go to our Dutchess County Fair. That's something. Yeah, so without further ado, it's all yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
I don't know where that patriarch thing came from. <laughs> but I appreciate the introduction. <clears throat> and uh, I'd like to welcome you all. This, uh, as uh, we were informed, the 171st fair. Um, you know, like she, like she said, there is kind of a, an analogy here with the uh, iceberg. There is so much going on, and, and there's so much preparation, and so much all year long. I mean, uh, we spent, Annie and his crew and the staff have spent uh, all winter, which was really kind of cool. We had a mild winter, so we got so much done. And I, I gotta say, the fairgrounds and the, everything that we've done is so well prepared this year. There's only one factor that we have to be concerned about. And somehow, it's working out pretty good. <laughs> the weather, that, that's the killer in this, in this kind of business. So uh, we're hoping for a good week. It looks pretty good. Yesterday was phenomenal. Uh, people were smiling. It, it was just unbelievable to see this crowd as they came into the, to the fairgrounds. <clears throat> and we have so many things to show people and some really good new things that are, have been occurring. And I'm not going to steal the thunder from Andy because they're the ones that put this all together but we did spend a lot of time trying to you know as was mentioned our business is agriculture and this is what we promote and this is what we do and this is what all the events throughout the year helps to support our fair we couldn't we couldn't have this operation without a car show and some of these other shows that we have because this is what brings income in to make us be able to do these things so we have people here that work here year round and it's, it's an expensive operation, but we've done very well. The weather's really helped this year, too. Uh, we've only had a couple of little downers, and uh, so far, so good. So we're off to a good start. Um, we have on the Livestock Hill, we have some new things going on. We have some tours for the, through the livestock. We've changed some of the barns. We've fixed the barns. We have a new entrance by the uh, train station, which it will actually take you right into the... Uh, into Livestock Hill, which really is is bringing people in there. I, I, all I'm talking about it yesterday, the, the uh, attendance through there, the people through there yesterday was great. Everybody really appreciated it. And the other real highlight yesterday, and I want, again, I'm not stealing anybody's thunder. I'll let him tell me about it or Deb. And uh, but we have we had this. I think well, I think what the concern was last year. We sat down and somebody said, "Well, what's new for the fair? What do you got? What's uh, you know, what do you?" What, and everybody goes, duh. So <laughs> they got, they really sat down and figured out some, some really innovative ways to bring people in. Went to our vendors, asked them to come on with a special, and then we came up with an award and we're doing judging every day of these specials. And I'm gonna let you hear about it from them, not me. But I wanna tell you yesterday, it was really, it took the attention of everybody. And some of the stuff that you can have, for everything every, from jalapeno, lemonade, to you, you name it, it's, it's some really, really interesting stuff. So the guy that really puts this all together and the guy that runs the show, and I'll tell you, year round, day and night this week, he's a little tired. Andy Amparati, please, will you uh, come up? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's nice to see everybody here again. Um, and it seems like we expand a little bit every year, and that's nice to see, especially because it's our community, and I like to support our community, especially our businesses in town, because, you know, um, like Ronald Reagan said, it's all about trickle down. So when we do something here on a weekend, I know on when we close at the end of the day at 5 p.m. every weekend they all go to town and I'm hoping after I've turned them upside down and shaken their pockets empty they're get a little bit left when they come to you in town and you shake the rest out okay um, so let's talk about the county fair uh, as Lewis has mentioned we have made some improvements this year and done some things um, and one of those things Obviously our mission is all about agriculture and um, the overall theme for most people uh, currently is about where our food comes from. And especially with little children, I don't think, um, I don't think most kids understand 
where, how it gets to the table. So one of the things we worked on over the winter was trying to educate kids how mommy and daddy get it, where it comes from at the store when they cook it and it comes to the table. So with the help of Lenny and Melody Moore, um, we created out in the infield a tent this year and it's called Ag Venture. And I encourage you all to go visit it and go through it because we're all still kids at heart as well. Um, and it's an interactive exhibit and it's manned by 4-H kids and FFA kids from the county that will take us through um, where we can harvest, just like the farmer does, um, a potatoes, carrots, apples, milk a cow, um, grapes, eggs from a nesting box from a chicken, and we put them in our little basket and carry them through, and we can sell them at one point in the, in the exhibit to a, a Cisco company or a Ginsburg company, and we can get fair money for selling that. And after we sell it, we go through the next part of the store, and we can buy just like we do at the New Tops Market. If it's open today, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but I'm hoping it's open. Um, we can buy a bag of potato chips or a half pint of milk or an apple. And the children can understand the whole process of how this works instead of it just shows up on a table at home. So we're doing our part to help them understand how the whole thing works. Um, that's part of our mission. So that's one of the new things we're doing this year. Mm, very, to, to yesterday, over 700 people went through that exhibit. So uh, I encourage you, if you have grandchildren or kids of your own, please go through, uh, it's very educational. The other thing we, we added to Livestock Hill this year that Lou mentioned was um, we brought in a company called Moo You Tours. Um, it's a traveling company nationally, um, highly educated uh, people about just agriculture, that's all they do. They take groups of 10 to 15 people, um, take them all across Livestock Hill. Any question you could possibly ask about agriculture, they will answer in depth. How many gallons? How many gallons of water does a, a, a grown cow drink a day? Anybody got any ideas? You think about it because it's going to be a question when we're done here. All right, uh, and and it's way more than you think. Um, so those are the kinds of things that are going on in the hill. Uh, very informative, educational stuff. Um, The other thing that Lou spoke about is the food, the food thing that we worked on. Last year, there was a phone call from the press to Deb Ashman, uh, the vendor manager here. And he wanted to talk about what new food was at the fair. So I'm sitting in my office and Deb's taking the phone call and the conversation went on for 15 minutes and she hung up the phone and I said, uh, that wasn't easy, was it? And she said, no. I said, you know, it's the sausage and peppers, it's the burgers, it's the french fries. Well, we didn't have anything new. It's the same old, same old. So all winter long, we worked on a food program. And we encouraged all of our vendors to come up with new items at their booths that they've never had before. How many of you have seen this program on TV, Carnival Eats? Uh-huh. Carnival Eats is a program that's on cable this guy, Noah Capps, travels all over the country and tries the most unbelievable food product. This guy's got to have a stomach of steel. Um, so we stole some ideas and we encouraged our food vendors to come up with new ideas. So uh, Robbie Maxwell here has come up with jalapeno lemonade. Now, one of the parts of our jobs here during the year is we have to sample all of these products. I'm adventurous, but some things are a little bit over the top. So uh, we did sample the jalapeno lemonade, and um, it's not too bad as you start out, but as it sits, <laughs> um, it's nothing a little vodka wouldn't cure, but anyhow, um, it's not bad. Uh, so I will share with you, yesterday we started the program at 11 o'clock in front of the, my office over there, and uh, we had some press, some judges from the press, 
Some of the directors from the society were judges. Uh, and I think we had 10 or 12 um, entries yesterday, and we're going to have the same today. So I'm going to give you a little sample of what's going to be judged today. One of the uh, entries is from Hans Handsome Devil Barbecue, and they are um, Italian meatballs wrapped in bacon and smoked. There's a picture here, and I will tell you they look quite delectable. Okay? Um, from John and Joe O'Han, local guys right here from Rhinebeck, the gyro cone, uh, our bread purveyor. We have one purveyor here that provides all the bread product for everybody on the fairgrounds. He comes from Chicopee, Massachusetts every morning. And he brought us, during the season, a bread cone. It looks like an ice cream cone. The texture on the outside is that of a bagel. And the inside is soft. And it's, it looks just like an ice cream cone. And Johnny and Joe have filled it with um, tzatziki, tzatziki sauce, sliced lamb, beef, or chicken, your choice, shredded lettuce, sliced red onion, and diced tomatoes. Looks pretty good. We have a uh, piggyback burger combo, a homemade burger topped with barbecued pulled pork, cheddar cheese with a side of pierogies, and topped with a pickle uh, from Janix Concessions down here. Uh, Nick and Benny's American Grill has fresh cut fries with Cajun seasoning, which is right here in the red and white tent. Uh, we have Mexican corn from the roasted corn guy down at the bottom of the hill, la layered with cayenne pepper, mayonnaise, and fresh lemon. We have from Scotty's Good Foods the Oktoberfest, which is a potato pancake layered with a filleted bratwurst, uh, sauerkraut, and German potato salad on top. Interesting. Uh, and an apple walnut cannoli from Simply Cannoli, a crunchy cookie shell filled with apple strudel topped with sweetened cannoli, ricotta cream, crushed walnuts, and confectionery sugar. So um, yesterday's winner was uh, from uh, Sweet Stacks Chimney Cakes, which is a brand new vendor. Um, and he's out in the infield. And I, don't, I never had a chimney cake before. It, is, uh, it looks like a cannoli shell, but it's cake and it looks just like a cannoli, round hole in the middle. He filled it with vanilla ice cream, chocolate cookie crunch, drizzled with chocolate sauce, and he was our winner yesterday. Today there will be another winner. Tomorrow there will be another winner. On Friday, those three will come back and we will crown the Spork King. <laughs> um, and we also have our app that everybody can download for free, and on Sunday, all of our uh, patrons can come in and they can do the spork run and they can go on the app they can do the spork run and go to every vendor in their window they have that they have the spork award and they can download it and they can do the run and there'll be a people's choice award on sunday and we'll announce that as well and the whole spork award thing has been sponsored by our partner rhinebeck bank and we'd like to thank them for that liz roger thank you very much <laughs> carolyn and everybody else in the bank thanks you guys um, so that's been a lot of fun. There's, social media has been crazy about this. Uh, people have come up yesterday, there was a crowd in front of the office watching all of that. Um, so it's been, it's been fun. Some of it I'm gonna try, some of it not so much. <laughs> but it, there's something for everybody, you know? Uh, so it's been, it's been interesting. Um, so that's, we're ever evolving. The last thing I want to hear as the fair manager from my patrons is, oh, I saw that last year. That's, I, I just, that makes me cringe. So uh, we're forever trying to keep it fresh and, and keep it so people want to come back and, and see something new. Um, so on the tables here at the ends, There are postcards that you can help yourselves to, and they're from one of our vendors, uh, Cornerstone Services. Um, and it's just a postcard um, of our, one of our logos that we use, and it says, on the back it says, Greetings from the Dutchess County Fair 2016. Help yourselves if you'd like them. We got more at the office. Um, you can have, they'll make them if you want something for your business. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, we use them for a lot of things. Uh, so that's a gift for you to take. A um, Couple of other things that are going on. Today is something we've been doing um, for many years now called Ideal Country Holiday. 
It's for kids in Dutchess County, underprivileged kids. Uh, at least a thousand of them will be here today. We bring them to the fair uh, and we foot the bill for that. Uh, between ourselves and Powers, our carnival, we bring all those kids to the fair, uh, give them t-shirts, give them rides, give them lunch, uh, bring them to the fair for the day. The other thing that we're doing this year for the first time is something called Think Differently, which will happen tomorrow morning. Um, Think Differently is for uh, children on the spectrum. Lights, sound, those kinds of things that affect them. So we will open tomorrow morning at 9.30 instead of 10, just for those children and those families. Um, the carnival will not turn on the lights uh, or the music. Let them come in and have some fun and beat the crowd before that happens and have some, uh, have some time at the fair before it all starts up. So we're gonna try that. Uh, I don't know what to expect number-wise, but we're gonna open to them and let them come in and do their thing. So that'll be new. Um, Also, tomorrow morning, the county executive will hold an agricultural forum on Livestock Hill uh, to talk about farmland protection, which is obviously part of our, our mission. So that'll be going on up there. Um, l last year, we did that for the first time. Um, I expect that to be well attended for those folks as well. It's something that uh, we're very passionate about. Uh, I know it's, it's, it's growing legs, uh, and they do a very good job at um, moving that forward every year so uh, that's a good thing uh, I think there's about 50 or 60 people coming this year and the guys from the radio station will be up there promoting that again tomorrow as well um, we, we started another program this year in the horticulture building that I'm, I'm pretty excited about um, and it's supported by local businesses um, we started a junior landscape program uh, it's, it's really hard to get young people involved in a lot of things anymore for some reason. I, I just don't understand it. They all want jobs, but they don't want to do anything to get the jobs. So we decided we would throw money at it. Um, so the society put $2,000 up uh, and we offered space in the Hort building for high school seniors or kids in college to have space in the Hort building to put up a display. Um, and we, the, the local landscape companies, provided all the product for them to do the display. The mulch, the, the, the flowers, the hardscape, everything. And they will be judged. We got three kids, two, one high schooler, and two kids in college to come and do the displays. They're down there in the building. I encourage you to go down and look. They did a great job. Um, and we also got three, we got local business people to donate money to go towards that as well. Um, so all, we were only gonna give the money to the winner, but in the end we've decided to give all three kids money. So they're all gonna get money to go away to, co uh, to either to further their college education or go to college. So. Um, Tony at Phantom Gardener has done a spectacular job with that. Uh, Melody Moore has put money into that. Uh, Adams Fairacre Farms has put some uh, landscape material in, into that, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, we have to encourage kids to be involved in these things, but my God, it's like pulling teeth. Um, but we're gonna keep pushing. Uh, so it really came out nice. I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, the other thing that's going on is uh, what you folks do. Um, the chamber uh, has got a booth in the uh, Duchess Marketplace tent over there. Uh, Winter Sun and Periwinkles have booths in there. We encourage you all to, hit, to take space. Um, and I, we know it's hard to do six days. Take a day if that's all it works for you. Come and promote your business. I'm hoping we're gonna do 400,000 people this week. I don't know where else you're going to get exposure to 400,000 people in six days, but take what you can get in one. Um, it's, uh, it's a great way to promote yourself, and we're here to help however we can to do that for you. 
Um, it's uh, it's fun. I know it's hard to close your business for six days, so take advantage of one if that's all you can do. It's it's a great way to do it. Uh, that's about all I got. Other than I would like to thank um, Ally Lively and the Hudson Valley Valley Foundation for their donation to the Ag Venture Tent. Thank you, folks. Sure. Lenny. Lenny. Awesome people. For them, I don't know. They did a great job. So, has anybody got any questions? Yes. What did you say? Uh, tomorrow morning. You remember what time Mark's forum is tomorrow morning? 7:30. I think it's 7:30 in the show arena on Livestock Hill. And if I'm not mistaken, you, you have to purchase a ticket for that online, okay? All right, so as usual, I have some trivia questions. <laughs> so let's start with, what was the question I asked before? How much, how much water does a, a mature dairy cow drink in a day, average? Yes, ma'am. All right. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm going to do. You, you have to raise. You have to raise your hand, and I'm going to take three answers, and the closest one I will give the prize to. So she was first. She said 50. Kim, this lady is closest. 30 to 40, right here. All right. We're gonna stay with the dairy cow for a moment. So I've already given you a hint. And it's only gonna go with the first hand raised, no shouting out answers here. What is New York State's leading agricultural product? Right there. Milk. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Just a little side note. New York State raises, milk is worth $3.2 billion annually in New York State. Just a little side note. Um, first hand, what is New York State's insect? Wow. Yes. Nope. Correct. I, I just heard uh, Cornell uh, released two billion ladybugs like yesterday. He had to have such a trouble up there with some um, spider mite on all their. their Correct. Crops. The ladybug is uh, New York State's bug. Are you sure it's not the stink bug? <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is one of my favorite favorite trivia questions right here. A group of baboons is called? <laughs> Who? 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 <laughs> Winner. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're gonna talk about vegetables. What vegetable did the ancient Greeks and Romans use as an award in sporting events? Now this is typically a multiple choice question and I've got the answer here. So I'm gonna give you, nope. I'll give you three. Was it carrots, celery, or potatoes? Celery, she's the winner. I want to go back to I want to go back to milk again. I don't know. It's all about the dairy cow for me today. Um, 
when they, well before my time. They used to milk cows, obviously, by hand, well before I was born. Does any, I'm, and I'll give this to you in multiple choice as well. Does anybody know how many squirts it takes to fill a gallon of milk? I'll, I'll, all right, I'll give. All right, I'll give you his multiple choice. Is it 200, 350, or 500? Right on the money. Give that man a prize. Right here. It's 350 squirts in a gallon of milk. How many have done it in this room? Ask that. How many have milked a cow in this room? Yeah. How many people have milked a cow? Nice job, Mary Kay. <laughs> How many, uh, what do you got left? Two? Um, I've got some, we do some, we do a lot of trivia um, for the fair industry. So I've got, I've got a question. We had this, we play a lot of Jeopardy in the fair industry and one of the categories was herds. And this year we had a question on hedgehogs. Does anybody know what you call a group of hedgehogs? All right, I'll give you multiple choice. Is it a skein? Is it a flink? Or is it a prickle? A prickle. This lady's a winner right here. A prickle. A prickle is a group of hedgehogs. What do you got? One left? One left. Huh. Um, so I'm trying to think of a really good question here. Oh, who is, who's my sponsor? Who's my sponsor for the Spork Award? You can't answer that. <laughs> that lady over there, she's a winner. All right, everybody. That's kind of what I got for today. Has anybody got any questions before I go? Yes, sir. Why is there what? No Ferris wheel for the geriatric set. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you in on a little secret. We've got the wheel over there, but that's not the wheel that was supposed to be here this year. The carnival bought a brand new Ferris wheel. 11 stories tall and they got it in June and it was delivered to them in North Carolina and they used it for the first time before it came to us and it came from Holland and the guys from Holland came helped them set it up take it down set it up take it down in North Carolina so they could get used to it well they haven't got the hang of it yet it took 23 hours the first time they took it down by themselves so they wouldn't bring it. And I said, that's a damn good idea because I'm not having you here putting it up not knowing how to run it. So it'll come next year and you're the only ones at this point that know that we're gonna have a brand new Ferris wheel 11 stories tall next year. So it'll be here next year and I'll guarantee you that you will have a good time and I'll, ha I'll buy your ticket for you so you can be the first one on it. <laughs> Um, I don't, Greg, but I, I can tell you right now, um, 11 stories is 102 feet. That's, that's probably 90. So, and I know Ulster Hose has to be able to reach because they've got the tallest ladder truck around. We don't have a ladder that's going to reach it. We've already discussed it with emergency services. Okay. Anything else? Yes? No, I'm too old to ride the rides. That's your job. 
I hope you all enjoy the fair. Um, and uh, have a great day, folks. Thanks for coming. All right. I just want to say thank you. We hit the tally. We're six, we raised $656 for the scholarship fund. So thank you for that. Um, and I want to say, I think it's, we should give a round of applause for Dan Budd of Taste Buds. He also told me that anything you consume during Fair Week is calorie and fat free. So, because we're celebrating agriculture, food, local vor, and everything like that. Um, the one thing I want to say on a personal note is that one of the best things I think about the fair, and it's the best buy of the whole thing, is my cedar shingle. Now, if you go to an the Antique Village, they sell these for a dollar a piece. They're handcrafted by the, I mean this in a nice way, the two old guys down there. Um, but they hand hewn these and then they emblazon them with the logo. And every year, and some people collect these, they're only a dollar. However, if you grill, they make wonderful cedar planks for your salmon. <laughs> So I buy about 10 of them and I give them $20 because I know if I was going to Adams, all due respect to anybody from Adams, <laughs> they charge like $7.99 for two of these. So anyways, buy one of these for a dollar and give them $2 because the antique village, that whole area down there is lovely. And again, that's the basis of what makes our fair great is because we're educating the young, we're educating our lovely city people that have Again, with all due respect, no idea how a ear of corn gets from Fairway, which is the grocery store down there, onto their table. So it's important to support every aspect of the fair, but the, the, uh, the Antique Village, the Ag Hill, all these great little exhibits. And thank you again for our chamber members who have, um, have booths, like Winter Sun, Summer Moon. Um, I have a list I put, I think, in the email and on, on our Facebook page as well. So thank you for everyone who's, who's involved in the fair. Bring your friends and family. And we're all a team. Every one of us is a team. We have to really promote Ryan Beck, Northern Duchess. And like I said, we're, we're a wonderful community. And let's get the word out there. Thank you. And 700, woo! Of course, you all know 10% goes to the executive director. Um, <laughs> but thank you very much. I think anybody else have anything, any quick announcements? It's 20 to 9. Yes, Kayla from... Thank you. Any, anybody else? Because we're about five minutes ahead of schedule. Yes, Frank, our newest member, one of our newest members. I'm Frank Filet, I'm an artist. Just wanted to mention uh, the Art Studio View Tour this uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, September 3rd and 4th. There's 27 artists are on the tour in Northern Duchess, Southern Columbia County. And watch Panda Channel 23 next week. I made a video about the tour. And, uh, and it's being shown several times every day next week on Channel 23. Thank you. Frank. Great. <laughs> Any? Yes, Curtis. Yes, hi. I'm Curtis Center of the Northern Defendant Duchess News. Uh, please take a copy of the paper with you. Inside that paper is the this year's 4-H uh, magazine, 4-H Fair magazine. It's the largest one, 28 pages we've ever done on the 4-H kids. And uh, patronize the appetite. Thank you very much. And make sure to take a copy. We've got them when you checked in. Take a copy of your visitor guide. Take a few to bring back to the office. There are yellow pages, which we consider the purple pages. Yes, Miss Hopper. Hi, I'm Dawn Hopper from Duchess Tourism. I just wanted to offer a, a discount. <laughs> um, we have worked with Classic Harbor Tours, the number one boat cruise out of New York City. They uh, just launched a new program where they're doing a brunch cruise 
up from New York City to Poughkeepsie. And on September 11th, they're all going to be going to the Hudson Valley Wine and Food Festival. Also, folks will come up by train, do things in the Hudson Valley area in Dutchess County, and then they will go back on a dinner cruise. The dinner cruise starts at 4 o'clock. It ends at the Statue of Liberty, leaves out of Warriors Park. And if you would like to uh, be on that cruise for a 20% discount, go on a Dutchess tour. Woo! Thank you. Anybody else? Bueller, anybody? No, Layla. And, and one, I'm going to give one more plug for the for the booth that we have available that we rented out every day. Yesterday was Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. They had a great time. Where's my aerodrome people? Great time. Um, today we have Fraley Raikow. Wednesday, uh, today's Wednesday. Thursday, Hudson Valley Ceremonies. Friday, the bakery at Brookmead, which I will be there doing quality assurance just to make sure that the cannolis are fresh. Um, Saturday, I have Heart Hill Leather, which is leather goods. That's a new member as well courtesy of Roz. And Sunday, I have Sharp Images, Photographic, Maureen Gates, whoever she is, also Rotary President. Right? Okay, great. And uh, so stop by, the, and we're so grateful for, again, the Agricultural Society to, to kind of facilitate this tent, Duchess Fair Marketplace. And uh, stop by there. There's, And I will tell you, we have great placement this year because right across the booth from us is Hudson Valley Food and Wine Fest with their wine samples. So, um, but anyways, I think anybody else? Just throw it out there, babe. All right, I think that's it. Everyone have a great day. We thank you for coming out. And let's give a round of applause for the Agricultural Society. And go on and, and knock the socks off the world. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month. Nice job, Claudia. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice